friends welcome to my workplace at ranaghat west bengal india let us observe these totally unedited routine phaco surgery this is the main incision at 135 degree with a still keratom on the posterior aspect of the limbus and now this is 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose filling off the anterior chamber this is a side port two and a half clock hours away from the main incision and this is another side port on the left side two and a half clock hours away now this is capsulorexis the anti-capsule has been incised and a capsular tag has been raised by a needle i hold this capsular tag with the utrata forceps give an upward thrust on the anterior leaf of the main wound and complete the rexis. This is a fairly round rexis. You can call this is manual femto. And now hydro dissection. Fluid wave is passed. The fluid wave goes to the opposite equator. The nucleus is tapped and the nucleus is rotated and now some more visco and now is the time to introduce the tip of the feco needle the machine being used is faros with spip mode from Oatley, switzerland the tip goes into the anterior chamber some superficial cortical lens matter is removed in bevel down position now the handpiece is turned bevel is off now watch direct chop the tip is buried into the substance of the nucleus the nucleus is held very firmly and the nucleus is chopped the tip travels through the substance of the nucleus and the nucleus has been divided into four large fragments. Now each fragment is caught hold of with vacuum and it is further subdivided into two smaller pieces and emulsified. This is the third nuclear fragment. It is also emulsified. Uh, uh, divided into two pieces. FECO power, ultrasonic power used in this case is 65%. Flow rate is 45 ml per minute and vacuum is 450 millimeter of mercury. In this case I didn't decrease the vacuum for emulsifying the last nuclear piece because there was an epinuclear sheet covering the posterior capsule. Now the epinuclear sheet is being removed. At this time I mean FECO3 that is low vacuum low energy setting and now is the time to remove the cortex. We can see two small bits of nucleus those to be removed first. By the time my assistant gets ready with bimanual irrigation aspiration, I am removing some cortical lens matter with this beautiful instrument. It is a 23G Simco cannula. It is attached to a separate bottle of BSS and by the time my assistant gets ready with bimanual, I can remove this much of cortical lens matter. Now I take the bimanual irrigation aspiration. Irrigation goes through the right side port and aspiration from the left and I can remove the cortex very easily, the subincisional cortex by the bimanual irrigation aspiration. Now you can see some lens fibers at one o'clock. I have asked my sister to go to I mode 
and I'm removing these lens fibers. You can see this is capsular vacuum mode. Only 30 vacuum is there. And now is the time to implant an intraocular lens. I'm going to use a B cartridge. So I'm enlarging the main wound to three millimeter. And now this is a hydrophobic acrylic single piece monofocal intraocular lens. This is Technis 1. This is a beautiful intraocular lens. The lens is being used by me for the last almost 10 years and I haven't seen glistening in this lens. Whereas Alcon's Acrisoft lenses develop glistenings in two to three years. I have no financial interest. I'm just appreciating a good product. And now, the side ports have been closed by corneal stromal hydration and this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber. I always do a final lavage of the anterior chamber and I have never found TAS, that is toxic anterior segment syndrome in the last 10 years. I believe that is because of this final lavage. The anterior chamber is formed and the case is closed. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, empathy and great surgical competence.